Hi, everyone. Today, let's talk about upcoming earnings for the week. Then we'll talk about the economic calendar. Then we'll look at the charts. And then we'll look at my positions going into Tuesday. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this every single day that the markets are open as well as Sundays. So make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So looking at the earnings calendar for Tuesday, you can see we have a couple big players, Walmart, Home Depot, HSBC, kind of interesting, Medtronic, and then Realty Income is a company I like quite a bit. Looking at Tuesday, we have NVIDIA. That's a big one, obviously. It's been holding flat in that region where it's been for quite a while, probably waiting for earnings. We also have Southern Copper Company. Looks like they already announced earnings early. That's interesting. Good to see Copper continuing to do well. For Thursday, we do have BABA. Always a big company. Into it, pretty interesting. Autodesk, a couple of interesting companies here on Thursday. And then for Friday, nothing really big on the calendar. Dell, maybe. Moving over to the economic calendar, we have Flash Services PMI. Interesting to see how services continue to do well. Manufacturing PMI, good economic indicator. But the big one here is Wednesday. So we get the FOMC minutes for the 1 February meeting on Wednesday. I would expect to see a lot of hawkish talk based on what the Fed governors were saying here recently, talking about potentially higher interest rate hikes, talking about 50 basis points, potentially talking about a higher terminal rate. I would expect Wednesday to be pretty bearish, so keep an eye on that. Might get a rally into Tuesday, like we talked about on the Friday video. And then we start getting a little bit more hawkish talk on Wednesday to push the markets down. Just a thesis worth paying attention to. And then we have GDP, revision for Q4. And then we have another Fed president coming out and talking, probably saying hawkish things on Thursday. And then on Friday, we got another big one. We have the PCE index, core PCE, core PCE year over year. And then we have new home sales as well as consumer sentiment. So pretty big week in terms of economic news, actually. But like I said, the big one's going to be that FOMC minutes on Wednesday. Moving over to options here, you can see quite a lot of puts in the system still. Put ratio is at 1.18 for Tuesday. But bigger calls here at 410. So 410, 415 for calls. Max pain is at 411. So you would expect the market to go a little bit higher on Tuesday, like we talked about on the Friday video. Still lots of puts in here at 408, 405, and 400. Overall, not a lot of options here for Tuesday, only 300,000, but still a decent amount. Again, drifting towards that 411 number is what I would expect. You can see options currently in the market, 405 and 406, but we're expecting it to drift towards that 411 max pain area. You can see what that looks like, just so many more puts here in the system compared to calls. And once again, looking to drift towards 411 total. Maybe not exactly on the spot, but we're currently at 407.38. So that's a couple of dollars of upside here potentially for Tuesday. And then looking at the Friday expiration here, you can see almost a million options in the market. Max Payne still at 410. So still looking at a couple of points of upside even throughout the week here. You can see how many more puts are in the market. Put call ratio super high here at 2.76. 2.77 almost here for Friday. Tons and tons of puts in the market. And this is why I think even if we move down here in the short term, you have to expect that it's going to be met with buyers. There's just so much bearish sentiment. This is a huge ratio here for Friday. Obviously, it's early in the week and this could totally shift. But these are big numbers here at 395, 400, 405, even here at 410, 411. So people are definitely trading puts. And then you have a big 418 call here, probably not going to get above that level for a Friday close. So keep that in mind. If we do get a rally, you can see some big numbers still here at 400 and 405 on puts. Some decent 405 calls though. So that's interesting. And then you can see that max pain here once again, big slope here on the put side and more gentler slope here on the calls just based on that put call ratio. Moving over to the charts, starting with the S&P 500 on the monthly view, you can see the month is basically flat. We are above that major trend support, but we did get rejection here at the 21 EMA. We're basically stuck in here going sideways. RSI on the monthly is ticking up slightly. Momentum is slightly bullish here, continuing to tick in the bullish direction after this significant downtrend that we had. Going over to the weekly view, though, you can see we've been testing this previous resistance. Getting multiple rejections at this level. We also have gap resistance that we touched on the last week of January, first week of February. Gap resistance, multiple trend touches, does look weak. 
But again, we still have multiple levels of support. We're still well above the nine EMA here on the weekly, which is much stronger on the weekly chart. 55 EMA continuing to hold as support as we retest that level. You would expect a little bit of bearishness on the week. Maybe we come back down and retest this 3,900, 4,000 level, and then you would expect a bounce from there, which is just a couple of lower than we are right now. And as we step down to the daily chart, you can see we did get rejection. Big wick finished higher than the open of day, but it was a gap down. So this does look slightly bullish. You would expect a move higher on Tuesday. We talked about that in the Friday video. Overall, though, momentum is moving in the bearish direction. It's not super clean like we had here where we had a significant move into bearish momentum and then a significant move into bullish momentum. We did have a couple of days here of flat momentum in this consolidative period. Last time we had that, it was a change in direction. You can see going back to October. But right now, it does look like we're getting a bounce into Tuesday, and then you would expect that to fail into Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, at least in my opinion. Moving over to the NASDAQ, similar thesis here, but we are getting rejection actually from the 55-week moving average. It's not acting as support the same way that it is on the S&Ps. So every time we get into the zone, into that 12,400 level, we continue to get rejection, which is interesting. We are at this trend line, though, which continues to act as support. We've tested it twice at this point, and we continue to get bounces from that level. Overall, it does look pretty bearish coming off of the 55, but right now we're trapped in this zone, waiting for a break one way or the other. You can also see we have this shorter term trend line, which is fairly strong that we tested on that last week of January, first week of February getting that first major rejection. And since then, we've had consistently lower highs on each of the next candles. Overall, looking weaker going into the next week. You can see here we have not gotten a step down on weekly momentum quite yet. But once we get a bigger break of this 12,250 level, this trend line right here, then you would expect a push back down into this 11,800 level, retesting the nine-week moving average. And that's really what we're looking for. We're still continuing to trade bounces off of support as long as it continues to hold. But if we do get a push through, it's going to be fairly significant, probably another week or two of downward potential. And if that does happen, then you're looking at probably a 5 to 6% down move from there. Moving over to the Russell here on the one month view. Again, continuing to tick in the bullish direction. We got through the SMA on RSI and we're above the 50 level. Overall, looking very bullish on the monthly view. Moving over to the weekly, you can see we're definitely having a little bit of struggles with the 144 EMA currently trading at 1949. That's a tough resistance level. Tested it, got rejection, testing it once again here. We can get up and hold above it one more time. Then we're probably looking at a push up into the 2040, 2050 level. It is worth noting that momentum here on the weekly chart is stepping down just slightly, not big steps. And last time we did have a move down, we didn't even get into bearish territory and then we pushed higher. Looking at the MACD EMAs, you can see we're consistently moving higher, potentially into bullish territory where we had this consistent move down, creating that downtrend. And now we have consistent moves higher, potentially creating at least somewhat of an uptrend on the weekly chart. And similarly to the other major indices, jumping down to the daily chart, you can see daily momentum is bearish. So we're expecting a shorter term retrace probably a longer term bullish price action on the monthly. So definitely mixed signals, probably not expecting a huge push in one direction or the other. If we move higher, we're looking at 2040 like we talked about. And if we move lower, probably going to find support in here at around 1840 or so, about 100 points of downside potential. We also have lots of EMAs here on the daily chart, the 55, the 144, and then the 200 SMA all sitting down here as support. And it wouldn't surprise me if we did come in, test those levels on a fairly big push down, find support, and then we come back up and retest those upper trend lines. Moving over to the Dow, just quickly here, you can see similar thesis, found resistance, found support. Now we're channeling within this range. This is a very long-term range. You can see we've been in this range multiple times for long periods of time. And certainly possible that that's what we're finding right here. We're continuing to hold above the nine week moving average, well above the 21 and 55s. You can see we're actually all in line here now for the first time in quite a while with the 9, 21, 55, 144, and then the 200 SMA. Here on the Dow, everything does look bullish going into the next week in terms of technicals. 
But in terms of momentum here, it does look slightly bearish. RSI basically flat. Not a lot to say here. We have three dojis in a row, definitely indicating some indecision. And it wouldn't surprise me if we got back down here and retested this longer term support level at 333, 334 next week. Certainly possible. We've had multiple moves from where we are right now into that zone, found support multiple times, and then got bigger pushes higher. It is worth noting this is a lower high here. Indecision, probably going to get a push down. Maybe we come down, retest the 155 or even the 144 over the coming weeks. But right now, you have to assume that we're not making new highs unless we get a really dramatic push and a resurgence of momentum. But it just doesn't seem like there's anything in the markets that's going to do that right now. It seems like all the information coming out is generally bearish in terms of higher rates, higher inflation, and higher rates for longer. Moving over to the SPX divided by the M2 money supply. This is one of my favorite charts, and I look at it every single week. Just gives you a different perspective on what's happening with the SPX. And you can see here, we did come into resistance. We've thrown multiple wicks through the 144 and the 200 SMA. Just looks continuously bearish here. Once again, expect to come back into this zone and find some support in the 55 or 9 EMAs on the weekly chart, which would be just a little bit of a down move. Find a little bit of support in that zone and then move higher. We're sitting on that previous high here, as well as this longer term support level that we've looked at multiple times. Very strong level of support and it continues to hold. If it does break right where we are, then we're looking for that slightly bigger push down, but I don't expect it to be super dramatic like a move like this. Generally, we're expecting just a push back here to the trend line, and then you would expect a continuation if you're going to get it. In terms of momentum, stepping down, basically the same as the SPX, but looking at where we are historically, very similar ranges here to the 2018-2019 cycle, multiple pushes through this zone. And it is worth noting that not very often do we get below the 200 SMA on this chart. You can see we got below it pretty substantially during the 2008 crisis, and then we pretty much above it throughout the next decade. And then here we got below it during COVID, as well as that very quick dip here in 2018 into 2019. It is worth noting that the M2 money supply is shrinking, so that is interesting. And that could certainly keep the SPX a little bit lower for longer. Usually money is inflating, which generally drives up the cost of equities, just generally with inflation. But right now, that's not what we're seeing with the M2 supply actually shrinking for the first time ever. Moving over to the NASDAQ divided by the SPY, this is always an interesting driver of growth. Basically, we're still stuck in this channel here. You can see we continue to find resistance at the trend line. Got a pretty strong rejection here generally indicating that this is a strong reversal of conditions. Came up, closed above it, threw that big wick and closed much lower. Got a candle of indecision, which does potentially illustrate that we could get a nice little bounce into Tuesday and then get that bigger rejection down to the trend line down here at around 301. Still watching that big 30 level as the stronger level of support. If that does break down, then we're going to be looking at much lower prices. Momentum here on the daily chart also stepping down. RSI stepping down as well. Everything looks fairly bearish here, indicating lower prices to come. But like I said, I don't think that's going to happen right away on Tuesday. We also continue to find support here on the 200 SMA, which is trading at 3.02. So just above that longer term support, but potentially going to roll over here, at least from what it looks like. Moving over to the SPX divided by gold. Looks like gold is outperforming here a little bit in the short term. S&P is not quite performing the same way that they have here recently. We had that bigger move down that we were watching, bigger move higher here recently. It looks like the SPX is starting to cool off and gold is probably going to move a little bit higher, probably a short term retrace back down to the 55 EMA, at least on the daily chart, which does correlate similarly with the 21 EMA. Momentum rolling down, RSI rolling down. Overall, you'd expect this to move lower, allowing gold to outperform the SPY, at least in the short term. Moving over to the NASDAQ divided by the Russell, I just wanted to highlight this strong rejection that we had off of the trend line. It's been in the zone for quite a while. Traded below it slightly, got back into the zone, tested support, tested resistance here, and we got a strong rejection. Russell has been outperforming the NASDAQ quite strongly. We've noticed that over the course of the week, the Russell was holding up quite strongly as the NASDAQ was struggling. So keep that in mind if you're trading either of these products. The Russell seems to be doing better here, at least in the short term. 
Moving over to Apple and Tesla just for a moment on the weekly chart. Apple showing the same signs of rejection at that 155, 156 level that we've been talking about. Three wicks to the upside showing rejection. Haven't gotten a true confirmation to the downside yet, so that keep that in mind. Something similar to this where you get a big wick rejection and then you get a big move higher here. It's a pretty good indicator that you're going to be moving higher soon after. We haven't quite gotten that yet. Momentum is still bullish on both charts, actually. You can see we're swinging to the upside. We were very extended to the downside on both charts, which is probably why we're seeing such a strong reaction back into some higher prices. Our eye on both looks strong here on the weekly views, but these are some pretty big levels. You can see where we were here in May of 2022. Big consolidation period where we had that bigger where we then had that move higher, came into resistance, and then had that big waterfall sell-off. You can see all of the EMAs pretty much getting in line here to the downside. Overall, this is still a bearish trend despite this bigger reaction here. So keep that in mind on the weekly view. We're still well below the 144 and 55 EMAs. Looking for rejection here. Momentum does need to step down. Could take another week or two for that to happen, though. You can see very strong step up despite the price action here on Apple. And similarly, that is true here once again with Tesla. It's worth noting that it is a significantly higher weekly close on Tesla as well. So still bullish momentum, but definitely coming to some zones where you would expect rejection. Moving over to NVIDIA just for a moment because their earnings are coming up this week. You can see we're still getting rejection from this trend line. We have the longer term trend up here. Haven't quite tested that level yet, so still potentially could get another wick to the upside to test that longer term trend line. But right now, Three wicks to the upside, definitely looks weak. Got a very small step down in momentum on the weekly chart. And at this point, you would have to assume that you're going to come back into this zone, probably 180, 181, find some support and then move higher, potentially back into 242. That would be what I would be looking for here. Maybe come up a little bit short, 190 previous wicks and some support in this zone here at 190. But overall, this momentum is rolling over. It's just taken a long time to do it. Seemed like most people thought that this was going to happen sooner, and that's tough sometimes because being wrong and being early sometimes looks the same. Moving over to stocks above their 50 and 200 day moving averages, you can see both of these look like they're starting to roll over here. We've had a couple of wicks to the upside here on the 50 day average, made a lower high, rolling over, made a lower low compared to this previous low, and it just looks like we're going to roll over here soon. 200 day moving average found some support at this trend line that we had been watching continues to show a little bit of strength but again momentum ticking to the downside very strongly hasn't broken the 50 level on rsi yet so that would be a nice bearish development if that did happen but right now it does look like a high a lower high and that we're gaining momentum here to the downside moving over to yields it would not surprise me if these did continue to roll over here from friday at least a little bit lower and then we get the Fed comments on Wednesday, giving us a nice little push to the upside of hawkishness. That would be what I would be looking for here on yields. You can see lots of wicks here on the two year. It looks like we're going to come down and at least retest 450. That's what I would be looking for there. Momentum ticking down as well. RSI moving lower here. Similarly on the 10 year, big wick, big rejection candle. You would expect this to continue down over the next day or two at least into that FOMC minutes, where if they say some hawkish things, obviously that's going to push yields higher, at least in my opinion. You can see we got back to this previous high going back to the end of December, at least on the 10-year. Tested that level, got that big wick rejection. And like I said, probably need at least a little bit of a dip to get some buyers back in the driver's seat and allowing this to go higher if it's going to. Finishing up here with the chart, looking at the dollar, do want to highlight this very strong rejection that we had here on the dollar. So we were watching this ascending triangle, which is a bearish trend. And you can see here, this candle on Friday looks extremely bearish. We threw a wick through resistance, got very strong rejection, closing at the open of the previous day, fully engulfing. Looks like a very strong rejection candle on the daily chart. Once again, giving you a potential for some bullish price action on Tuesday. But it is worth noting that momentum on the weekly chart is still ticking in the bullish direction. So if we do get a shorter term retrace, I would still expect in the medium term that the dollar is going to go a little bit higher, probably up to this 105.50 level, maybe 107, somewhere in this zone. Definitely expecting some higher prices on the dollar as yields continue to rise. 
But right now, you have to respect this big candle at big resistance. You can see this is an important level going back to the highs. Basically, throughout December, multiple tests of this level continuing to get rejection. And once again here, getting strong rejection, and you have to respect that. Moving over to my positions, you can see I am slightly bullish. I sold a put spread here on the IWM. Just a slightly bullish position, giving myself a little bit of cushion down to 192. And then for the queues, I do have two covered calls here, trying to collect quite a bit of credit here. And then I have two puts down at 300 as well. So I do think we're going to rally a little bit, but I'm still fairly protected. You can see my break even here is down at 289.70 for the puts and then break even here on the calls. Collected $1.50 on that. So down about 20 bucks on my actual share position. So I have about another $1.30 before I start losing any money on this share position to the downside, basically at that 300 level, expecting that 300 is going to hold on Monday. That will get a little bit of bullish price action. If there's any charts you would like me to go over, make sure you put those down in the comments. Make sure you like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video. I make it every single day that the markets are open as well as Sundays. So make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.